Hello class, uh, today we're talking about advertising and fashion illustration and uh, its limits and its capabilities and uh, a little bit of a glossary history going on here uh, from way back in the day um, showing a shoe advertisement for W.L. Douglas uh, shoes for gentlemen and ladies and misses and this is probably about 1860 or so unknown illustrator uh, but you'll notice it uh, shows our W.L. Douglas, our fearless leader, um, somehow embossed on the side of a shoe. Um, and the shoe is uh, just some funky, pointy, old lace-up piece. Um, very steampunk, but uh, everything was back then. Uh, this is pretty typical for the day. Uh, Sears catalog, um, Ward catalogs, and so on. Um, they put things in their best light. They didn't have photography, so they employed uh, folks that were illustrators and uh, folks that were uh, etching. They would uh, create prints from an illustrator's direction. So pretty much no name, and everybody needed it. If you had product, you had to show it to the folks. Toulouse Lautrec. You may not realize it, but one of the most famous of the Impressionists was an illustrator. Here he is uh, advertising P. Sesco's photography studio. And that was brand new at the time. And uh, we see Mr. Sesco there in the background underneath the draped camera taking a shot of a masked young lady. Uh, he also did work for the Moulin Rouge, perhaps his most famous work there. Uh, you, you've probably seen the paintings, or, excuse me, the um, lithographs. Uh, but his work was all over Paris, uh, glued to the walls. It was pretty much one of those things that you couldn't get away from in, in those days. They had billboards all over the place. Uh, not billboards, but uh, places to post your bills. Paul Uribe. Uh, this is a fashion illustration. At the time, if you remember, corsets were big. And he's actually showing long, loose-fitting clothing. Looks very comfortable for the women. They're, it's very much a, uh, I guess, elongating form as far as fashion goes. He's selling the dresses, he's selling the patterns, and he's selling the style. These ladies are very modern. Their hair is up almost flapper-esque, if you look at some of the hairdos there. The painting on the wall is Japanese. The art, uh, the way that it's executed is very uh, Japanese also. Uh, Mr. Iribe was a lover of Coco Chanel. So he was definitely in the middle of the, the scene. So uh, very radical work for the time, but it's beautiful illustration on its own. J.C. Leyendecker, uh, very famous for his arrow shirts illustrations. And you see these guys in the 1920s, 30s, I'd say. Uh, very slick college Type fellows here. You see the uh, looks to be the Harvard symbol there in the in the glass. Uh, beautiful work, exquisite illustration. Haddon Sunbloom. I'm going uh, back from fashion over to uh, advertising in general. Perhaps one of our most famous icons in the U.S., which is the Coca-Cola Santa. He's all over the place, but Haddon did some gorgeous work for a number of big clients, and, and Coca-Cola was one of his major ones. And it was a repeat. He was always being called in to do another one. Gene Grow. Gorgeous work. We're looking into the 50s, 60s here. And uh, this is, uh, it is fashion illustration. However, I believe it also is just good illustration. It's gorgeous work. We are seeing the implied um, chaise lounge, I assume, that this this uh, young woman is leaning against. 
and it's in the negative space. It's it's gorgeous. Andy Warhol, what? Isn't he fine artist? Well, yes, he was, but likewise, he was a uh, fashion illustrator and an illustrator in general. And this is his uh, blotted ink technique. The the ink in his pen would kind of ooze out heavy in some spots and um, skip in other spots. But this was his standard technique for illustration uh, in the 50s. And then he started doing his uh, Campbell soup cans and, and uh, that sort of stuff and, and launched into a whole new career. Wallywood. Now, that sounds like from um, National Lampoon's Vacation. However, Wallywood was an illustrator uh, and cartoonist. He did a lot of uh, stuff for Mad Magazine. But he also was an illustrator for advertising. Here he is. He's developed the speedy Alka-Seltzer character with a little Alka-Seltzer hat and Alka-Seltzer body. Illustration was used uh, back in the day. If you look down in the lower right, this, this woman who's showing you the package of Alka-Seltzer, that's an illustration. That's not a photograph. So these folks were uh, deployed in all manner of uh, uses here. Let's jump ahead, and here we see uh, Gary Taxali, who's a working illustrator from Canada. He's got a wine label. And here we are incorporating the same idea of cartoons and uh, just wacky stuff, but on a wine label. Gary's uh, work can also be seen in plushies and uh, those little hard plastic toys that you see in the hipper shops. Phil Singer who was an instructor of mine. Uh, he's got a, some beautiful, beautiful work uh, from nature, obviously, but you'll see it on the boxes of Celestial Seasonings Tea. His work is used, these gorgeous con concepts of, you know, the, the little kangaroo mouse or whatever that is, kangaroo rat kind of pulling a, whoops, sorry about that, jump, pulling a, a cart full of other animals, but these sort of concepts also work well in advertising. A friend of mine, Q Cassetti, uh, from upstate New York, here she's uh, using her concepts of, um, she does some gorgeous work as far as nature goes, but the, this is a, for a band called the Chicken Chokers and the, another band called the Tough Cats, and they're playing at Castaways. Um, her work can be seen at QCassettiCut.com, and uh, just look look for her work. It's beautiful. Tanya Ling. Now this piece could be in any gallery, I think, as as art, but it's fashion illustration, and uh, Tanya is uh, just doing some beautiful work as far as her uh, handling of the medium. The paper is still raw. You can see it's just scribbly, scribbly, but at the same time, her gesture is gorgeous. Really sensitive work. Bianca Raffaella, who's a uh, working illustrator in uh, England, I believe, possibly, or well, she's in Britain somewhere. Uh, I seem to think she was also in Edinburgh. Um, but you see the website there listed up coming up the side is www.biancarafello.com. Uh, look her up. And this is a watercolor with um, a pen edge. Beautifully done. She's handling her washes very, very well. Um, but we've seen work going from full blown oil paint to simple pen and ink, and here we see well-controlled watercolor. Greg Newbold, who's doing some fantastic work. His work can be seen at gregnewbold.com, and uh, he, I believe he has a blog at gregnewbold.blogspot.com. But you see, this is a gorgeously rendered landscape, uh, rolling fields. Uh, Greg recounts the story of doing this job for a, um, I believe, a 
vegetable firm that needed it for an advertising campaign. He delivered the job and proceeded to then forget about it, as, as most jobs go. He got paid for it, and he moved on. But while he was out on a walk one day, here he sees his illustration that has been merged with a landscape of a, it looks to be a mountain, excuse me, a, a mountain with uh, a lake, and, but his, his, if you look down here in the lower uh, left, you'll see his barn and the trees. The trees seem to be cloned. I'll, I'll jump back real quick. There was only one tree here next to the barn, but now in this, in the box, you'll notice there's two trees, one, two, uh, and it's also <laughs> his box is in the dumpster, so he's he's now seen his artwork <laughs> from the beginning to the end here of its life cycle, which brings me to the point, which is advertising and fra fashion illustration are meant to sell products. Um, they're meant to show the products and people in a favorable light. They have a limited shelf life. And some of these things, though, however, can become icons, such as the Coca-Cola Santa Claus and our speedy Alka-Seltzer guy. Um, they are executed in all mediums. So from pencil line all the way through 3D, um, you, you really have a full gambit of how these sort of things can be done. They are often commissioned by companies. However, ad firms do commission this sort of thing where a company will go to the ad firm and say, look, we want you to handle everything. Or they can be commissioned by individuals, individuals who may um, own a company and approach an illustrator to create an icon for them. Uh, these are often very high paying jobs uh, and depending on the products visibility and campaign size so if you're working for coca-cola sure you're going to get a chunk of change or Tropicana or, or one of these other big firms however if you're working for uh, Marvin's uh, shoe store that's something else and uh, you may be working for uh, you know mr. Douglas who we saw at the very beginning uh, he may not have a lot of money to pay you, but realize that your work is going to be moving their product. So that is advertising and fashion illustration. Thank you.